Oh, look at him. The Vixen. The Vixen. I don't, I don't think people have gotten to know the Vixen that I know. The Vixen that I know is a sweet, tender-hearted person. She's so kind, so giving, and she, she would do just about anything for someone. What's a hangout moment with the Vixen that, you know, people see the tough Vixen yeah. or the on-TV Vixen? Like, what's another side of Vixen uh, that you guys have had when you're hanging out or talking on the phone? She has been that friend that I call when I'm struggling with life. Mm. I'm like, oh, girl, pick up the phone. I'm having a bad day today. I need to tell you about it. I need to vent to you. I need to talk about it. Let, let me know that I'm not the only one experiencing this. This is, you know, I, I need someone else really there to go through it with me. And she, she, I was going through a really difficult time this past fall, just kind of w with the change of life and, you know, the season had ended, TV time had, had been done, and now I was truly really figuring out what was going on with life. And on the season 10 tour, she really was there for me for a lot of conflict of my life of just just the fact of like life was different and I was just trying to weed myself through it and figure out what I wanted to do what was some of her best advice some of her best advice was to stop thinking she always tells me she's like Blair stop thinking mm. she says stop thinking and just start being in not all those words all the time but she really just kind of offers herself a, as like a really friendly person to just kind of you know rely on now, do you ever have to comfort her when uh, she's dealing with so much negativity from the internet? We have. She puts on a really great front. Mm -hmm. She puts on. She's a really strong person, or at least she she shows herself as really strong to me. Yeah. Because there has been a lot of you know, internet controversy. She she has stirred up some things on, online, and and personally, she deals with it really well. And she she tries to show that it's not bothering her. And I always remind her too. I was like, you know what? You can't let it bother you. You can't feed the trolls. Right. Because what the trolls eat and munch on is a negativity, and they d they're just going to grow stronger with that. And uh, she's, I think she's done a lot better job of just kind of pushing that to the side. Look at her. I knew this was going to come up. Of course it did, yes. I knew you're, you, were, you were setting me up for this one. They were doing a Pride event in Canada, and Bianca Del Rio made a joke about... Um, Rape. She made a, a rape joke about mm. me, and, and definitely was like laughing about me and saying that I was using my personal stories for personal gain, some sort of thing. And, and she was definitely saying, "If you haven't been raped, you're ugly." Wow. So I'm going to drop that there. But I will say that people have asked me to comment about her, and I think people have wanted me to comment negatively mm -hmm. about Miss Bianca Del Rio. And I will say that I respect her very much as a person. I love her as a person. I see her for who she is, and I, I really respect her career. I don't hold anything negative against her because I think we all say things, and I, I'm in no place to judge her. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I, will, but I, I would be lying if I said that it didn't upset me. Yeah. It definitely upset me. It definitely hurt me. And I definitely felt some sort of ink. I felt like it was my job to kind of let my fan base know that people who say stuff like this, it's not okay. You know, and because I related to that, I have so many people that do relate to my story and so many people that are following, you know, my journey and everything that I, that I talk about and my platform because it is so heavily based on um, what I reveal on Drag Race. So I, I almost felt like it was a duty of mine to kind of settle the air a little bit. Yeah. And do you feel like because the Drag Race fan base, sometimes if one queen gives them permission to make fun of something for someone, mm -hmm. Uh, in that way, that then they, they, it opens the floodgates. Did you feel like that was something that happened after that? You know, I don't think that any type of joke to be made about rape could be an open floodgate. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that's that's okay. And no. it, but it is special. I have to detach myself too because obviously, that's something that's specially connected to me. You know, there are things that I don't understand and things that I don't connect with that I may hear a joke and maybe I'll chuckle. I don't know. Mm. So it's something obviously she doesn't connect to. And it's something that rubbed me the wrong way. But it was definitely a test to me. Yeah. For sure. To kind of say, not everything that is said is an attack. Mm -hmm. I don't think her intention was to attack me. I don't think her intention was negative. And um, if it was, I forgive her. Uh-huh. Do you think that, uh, do you get that sentiment from anyone that 
that she had said, like, why did you suddenly reveal this on the episode you're being eliminated? Did you feel like you had to defend yourself from that? Um, I think some people have asked that question, and I think some people have maybe insinuated that, but I don't feel any sort of need to defend it because mm -hmm. I know the truth. Yeah. And you don't need to defend something that you know wholeheartedly well when said. you believe it. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I would say, like, it, it, to wrap everything you know, in conclusion, there are going to be many things that are said and that I may say in life as well that people aren't going to want to hear mm. and that we may think is inappropriate. But people are learning. People are human. We can't necessarily say that ev we can't hold everyone at an expectation that they're perfect. Uh -huh. And so if there's one thing that I can say about Bianca is that with even without an apology, I still forgive her for the remarks that were said. And I, I hope that maybe we've all learned to just love people a little bit more and stop, you know, I don't think that all jokes need to jab at people's, um, the negativity of the world. I think some better jokes can be made and I think better comedians can make um, jokes that aren't digs at people's personal life. Well said. <laughs> One more, look at her. There she is. Yes, in her glory. Oh honey, the lady that gave you your big break. That's my mama. Uh, yeah, tell me, tell me about, what you thought about RuPaul before you were on the show and what did you learn in doing the show? I think I kind of got what I anticipated mm -hmm. when we filmed the show. Um, Ru is very stoic, uh -huh. very poised, very calm. Now, I have seen some remarks and some things that have said about Ru oh. saying that, you know, maybe she's just in it for the business, maybe the money. But I respect her. When she shows up to work, she works. Mm -hmm. We don't go on set to play. If we're going on a set somewhere, it's professional, it's business, it's something that we're creating together, it's art, it's creativity. And um, sure, I think there are lines that could be crossed, and I think there are some things. But I think RuPaul does a beautiful job of giving people an opportunity. And she likes seeing those people flourish mm -hmm. and, and really see, I think she does care. I think she does deep down really hope that her legacy is giving other people opportunity. And if she doesn't care, I still thank her because <laughs> it was her that gave me the opportunity to do what I'm doing today and to hopefully do much more. Yeah. So I, if anything, I can only give her my utmost gratitude and just continue to thank her. When you revealed, uh, you know, your truth about your assault, was it surreal not only having to reveal that, but there you are revealing it to RuPaul, <laughs> Michelle, and all of that. Yeah. that. Was that a major mind fuck? Yeah, it, it was. Um, I, I never was really incredibly starstruck, uh -huh. I guess, by them. I, I think like when you're sitting in front of someone in person, it becomes real. Right. And at that moment, I just felt like I was having a conversation with myself. Ah. And I also forgot many times when we were filming things that it was fi being filmed. Really? Many times I was like, uh, I forgot, like, oh yeah, this is all going to be shown on television at a later time. <laughs> right. you, know, you know, it feels like this is happening in current time. This is going to be happening right now. Uh -huh. And you forget that there's an edit of that later that's gonna be produced. Mm. And, and so, so that time, that was a time with me and myself and I on a stage in a soliloquy and just forgetting everything else in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a surreal moment. You have, I think, few in your life and that was a big one. It sure was. And it's you really one. took it on and you did it and now look at you now. She's growing. Free, powerful, Free, gorgeous. Free, powerful, and she's moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody give it up for Blair St. Clair. <laughs> thank you to all our viewers and thank you to the beautiful Lady Red. <laughs> yes, sweetie. And thank you, Blair. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching. We'll see you next time on Hey Queen and look at her. Hit it. <laughs>
You're welcome.